Hey guys, and welcome back to Garden of Kayland. So I have a lot of plants, and while some of them stand out for being exotic or expensive or rare or whatever, some of them are just outright weird. Beautiful, but weird. So here are all of my weird plants. But before we get started, hi, I'm Kayla and welcome back. If you're new here, welcome, and be sure to subscribe if plants are your vibe. Now let's look at some bizarre plants. Believe it or not, this is a cactus. It's actually called Pereschia aculeata, and it grows edible fruit called gooseberries that are like these orange little grape-sized berries, if you will. And what's so strange about it, besides the fact that it's this tropical looking cactus, it has little spikes on the stem too, which are totally unexpected to me. And the colors on it don't disappoint. We have like red, orange, and green leaves, which I think are really cute. Right now I just have mine up on a trellis, obviously, but I'm hoping that in the summertime I can go ahead and place this outside and maybe even get some of that edible fruit. When I was researching it, I also saw that people use the leaves to cook as well I guess maybe like as a seasoning I don't know a whole lot about it yet I'm still learning but I just thought that it was really weird that this is spiky and has edible fruit a cactus with edible fruit I'm sure it's not the only one in the world but it just kind of threw me off because it definitely does not look like a cactus since we're talking about cacti I might as well throw another one in there now I'm not a big cactus girl myself but occasionally I'll see one that kind of stands out and if it looks weird enough I'll get it. So I think this one kind of passes the test. This is a Euphorbia trigona. I think that's how you say it. And if you know me and how much I love my red plants, this one definitely had to come home with me. And you can kind of see underneath that red tone that there's still some like green and yellow underneath there. Now it doesn't have flowers, but when I first got it, it had flowers and that was just amazing. If this was just the regular green one, I probably wouldn't have gotten it. But the fact that it's a red one is what made it so odd and bizarre looking. I do think that I need to keep it under a grow light or it needs like direct light in order to keep this red. And since that's why I got it, I want to keep it under the grow light for that reason. But I definitely think that this is a conversation starter. I've already had people come over and mention it, maybe because it's in the back of a bunch of green foliage that you know, it kind of makes it pop out a lot more. Not gonna start getting into cacti, I don't think. At least not right now. It's just, it still just isn't my thing. I have three in here right now, but hopefully I can get like another two or three more and just have a big old pot of them. Can you imagine having to repot this? How's that gonna work? How do people repot like sharp cacti? That's definitely something I should look up. But either way, I love this cactus. It's here to stay. This is my Hoya Macrophylla Red. And if you're wondering where the red is, so am I. I mean, there's a little bit on the back, but this was sold to me with the impression that these leaves would be well, red. But even though they're not, this is still a really weird one for me. I think it's just because of the sheer size of the leaves. No, I take that back because of the size and the texture of the leaves. With those two things combined, this is, and I think maybe how they grow, like the pattern they grow in, this is definitely a weird one. Even though I've had this under a grow light for about four months, it still hasn't grown any new leaves, hasn't done anything, it hasn't turned red, hasn't grown a new leaf. It's just... It's just here. I did check the roots recently and they were healthy, so maybe it's just a slow grower, but get a look at how big these leaves are. Even with just five leaves on here, it's still pretty large. So I'm not complaining about the size or anything. I'm just really curious about this. One of the things that also makes it weird is the fact that like, why isn't it sun stressing? There is a little bit of darkness at the margins, but I don't know, this plant just continues to <laughs> confuse me and the roots keep growing so I put it in a bigger pot but no leaves so it's definitely a weird one a weird one that I really love of course especially because I love a Hoya with large leaves like this one but I'm really disappointed at the fact that it still has not turned red the leaves are really shiny and very thick and they have a really cool texture like a tortoise shell kind of I got this imported though and it was in the pictures it was really really red did I get duped or like am I tripping even if the pictures that advertise this were just sun stressed then how come this one isn't sun stressing? I don't know, the questions are just 
left and right with this it leaves me guessing and I guess that makes it more interesting to have but when it does start to finally take off I'm gonna have to find something else to put it on because a bunch of these leaves I mean it's already like wobbly now it's gonna be so heavy if I try to keep it on here so maybe it not growing is a good problem to have right now but I still wanted to do something you know so I show my allocation Jacqueline a lot and you can certainly see why the leaves on the jacqueline are very textured they almost have like this fuzzy type of i don't know surface on the top of it it's it kind of feels like sandpaper if i had to describe it it's just taken off and it won't stop there's one two three plants in this pot and it all started from one really dead plant that i just completely chopped back and this is what i'm left with now like are you serious you guys this is another one that people stop and ask about and they always feel the need to touch it like they're always you can't help but to touch the leaves on this because you see like little furry spikes i don't know how else to describe it but it's really really crazy looking i always say that if there were plants in space they would look like this plant and the allocation jacqueline starts to get really big and the stems just kind of get really long so i'm gonna have to find something to kind of stake these up soon but i really can't imagine like <laughs> leaves being any bigger than this on here because there are just there isn't a lot of like surface level on it so i'm just curious to see exactly what that's gonna look like this one is not only one of my favorite plants ever but it is like really crazy looking very very weird very beautiful but very weird i think it's pronounced cerecestus mirabilis and I always have a hard time with that, so don't come for me in the comments, y'all. I tried. They're very slow growing, which is okay because they need really high humidity. And, you know, my options are limited for like 80, 88% humidity consistently. I have to have it in one of the cabinets. So if it gets, when it gets any bigger than this, I'm going to have a hard time like relocating it because the leaves just are getting bigger and bigger and this is the newest leaf so it's still kind of reaching its full potential this is the the one before that so it's obviously going to be bigger than this one i don't know i don't know what i'm going to do with it when it gets any bigger than this but i've never seen anything like it i think that it definitely stands out and i don't really see a lot of people talking about it either there isn't a whole lot of information on them right now I just know I had to snatch one up. I actually thought it was an allocation when I first got it. And you know, it's not too far off because it needs that high humidity like one. It has those crazy shaped leaves like one. But if you learn to care for it properly and if you give it the right humidity, you are rewarded with like these crazy insane tie-dye leaves, which I absolutely love. I can't get enough of this plant. It is certainly one of my most bizarre ones another one that i think is out of this world is my allocation scalp rum i did not have a lot of luck with allocations in the past this is one that i have managed to keep on track i think it's because oh look at that leaf oh my gosh crazy and they're getting so big but i think it's doing so well now because i keep it in the cabinet and it even has this newest leaf coming in can't imagine how big that one's gonna be these leaves can go very dark and they're very textured the undersides are oh, red of course or more of like a pink so it's like a really cool contrast of colors of course some very very incredible textures going on here the leaf is very thick and waxy which is another thing that i love about it but if you really look closely you see that the center of them is more of a darker color which is another thing that i love i don't know everything about this plant like from its texture to its hard almost fake filling leaves and then these really deep sinuses just oh everything about it i worked so so hard to get this plant um, and keep it on track so I'm really happy that I managed to do so and that the leaves are starting to get so big it's just everything that I could dream for this is the philodendron tornum that is always on its best behavior there's just a lot going on here but each leaf kind of looks like I don't know fish bones a pot full of joy and chaos but it works out especially now that I have it up on a moss pole and I have this in Lekka and it just grows so rapidly the craziest part about this plant for me though is how it looks when it's unfurling like 
what is going on it looks like it's struggling but it's just imagine these all curled up into one when they're coming out they just look really really crazy i love this plant you guys i really do and the philodendron tortum used to be one that was kind of expensive i've seen them um the price drop on these significantly in the last year or two so i feel like they're more easily accessible and readily available now so i definitely highly recommend they're very easy to care for but really cool if you want something a little bit different or even if you want a palm without the spider mites i definitely would <laughs> consider the philodendron tortum i mean look how crazy this plant looks i can't believe i have this i remember i wanted it for so long and not only do i have one but i have one that's thriving and starting to get pretty big so it's really awesome to have it now so next is my well fin snake plant and i'm really not a fan of snake plants they just look like a bunch of like spikes hanging out it looks like a death trap to me just imagine this without the baby in it just one like weird random single leaf and i mean you can see the color on it it's like a two-tone green that definitely makes it stand out even more but it's really the growth pattern and the shape of the leaf and how big the leaf is and it's a lot more rounded than your average snake plant so that's another thing that I, I mean that's the main thing that I like about this again I think it looks way cooler when it's just a single you know just a single leaf but what can you do if the plant is thriving the plant is thriving so I'm glad that there's a baby in it but you know eventually I'm probably going to cut it out and put it in a different pot and have two of them. I think it's one of the most interesting plants that I have and another one that people ask like what in the world is that? Um, yeah I think it just stands out. The leaf is really thick and hard and like I can barely even bend it. It's just a really incredible plant to me and I just love it so much. So this is a really cool one. I recently got this one. The leaves I just want to point out are a masterpiece. They're like this beautiful heart shape very rippled and red underneath when they first emerge but that's not what makes this plant so weird what makes this plant so weird to me is definitely the fuzzy stems on it and i mean there are a ton of plants out there right now with fuzzy petioles of course like literally there's one called the fuzzy petiole but it's just the combination of this beautiful leaf in conjunction with the fuzzy petioles that is making this one stand out for me so i got this one fairly recently it's a hybrid of the philodendron varicosum and the philodendron serpents i'm really obsessed with this plant i've showed it on my instagram on my tiktok and i can't stop talking about it right now i didn't even take it out of what it came in yet because i don't want to like risk any damage or any shock or anything like that so <sighs> fingers crossed for this one you guys but look oh my gosh isn't it so gorgeous it is you don't need to tell me it is y'all i have been on live sales like showing out i got this one recently on a live sale and like can you blame me so i was showing this to my grandma she thought it was a watermelon peperomia and watermelon peperomia wish it could look this good okay even though they do look alike i'm not gonna lie i read that they also flower not really into the flowers on this but look at the foliage like are you kidding me so the leaves are really round they're very textured and they're velvety but look at the two-tone colors like the silver in the middle just this plant is everything it's not that big right now but <laughs> it doesn't need to be big to make a statement and i think it looks so weird in such a beautiful way like i said i didn't even know what it was until they showed it on a live sale and i had to snatch it up i had to have this plant it's only pushed out one new leaf for me since i got it but that's okay that's okay and i keep it in kind of low light so for it to be like still looking this good it's really thirsty but for it to be still looking this good is like i'm doing something right and me and this plant are definitely vibing right now i love it so much it's really weird 